Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. Before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video today, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. Light is fast. In fact, it's the fastest thing that exists. And a law of the universe is that nothing can move faster than light. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second, 300,000 kilometers per second, and can go from the Earth to the Moon in just over a second. Light can streak from Los Angeles to New York in less than the blink of an eye. While 1% of anything doesn't sound like much, with light, that is still really fast close to 7 million miles per hour. At 1% the speed of light, it would take a little over a second to get from Los Angeles to New York. This is more than 10,000 times faster than a commercial jet. Bullets can go 2,600 miles per hour, more than three times the speed of sound. The fastest aircraft is NASA's X-3 jet plane with a top speed of 7,000 miles per hour. That sounds impressive, but is still only 0.001% the speed of light. The fastest human-made objects are spacecraft. They use rockets to break free from the Earth's gravity, which takes a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. The spacecraft that is traveling the fastest is NASA's Parker Solar Probe. After it launched from Earth in 2018, it skimmed the sun's scorching atmosphere and used the sun's gravity to reach 330,000 miles per hour. That's blindingly fast, yet only 0.05% the speed of light. What's holding humanity back from reaching 1% the speed of light? In a word, energy. Any object that's moving has energy due to its motion. Physicists call this kinetic energy. To go faster, you need to increase kinetic energy. The problem is that it takes a lot of kinetic energy to increase speed. To make something go twice as fast takes four times the energy. Making something go three times as fast requires nine times the energy, and so on. For example, to get a teenager who weighs 110 pounds to 1% the speed of light would cost 2 trillion joules. That's roughly the same amount of energy that 2 million people in the US use in a day. It's possible to get something to 1% the speed of light, but it would just take an enormous amount of energy. Could humans make something go even faster? Yes, but engineers need to figure out new ways of making things move in space. All rockets, even the sleek new rockets used by SpaceX and Blue Origin, burn rocket fuel that isn't very different from gasoline in a car. The problem is that burning fuel is very inefficient. Other methods for pushing a spacecraft involve using electric or magnetic forces. Nuclear fusion, the process that powers the sun, is also much more efficient than chemical fuel. Scientists are researching many other ways to go fast. Even warp drives, the faster than light travel popularized by Star Trek. When it comes to space, there's a problem with our human drive to go all places and see all things. A big problem is, well, space. It's way too big. Even traveling at the maximum speed the universe allows would take us years to reach our nearest neighboring star. But another human drive is finding solutions to big problems. And that's what NASA engineer David Burns has been doing in his spare time. He's produced an engine concept that he says could theoretically accelerate to 99% the speed of light without using propellant. He's posted it to NASA Technical Reports server under the heading Helical Engine. And on paper, it works by exploiting the way mass can change its relativistic speeds, those to close the speed of light in a vacuum. It has not yet been reviewed by an expert. It has been met with skepticism from some quarters, but Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing. I am comfortable with throwing it out there, he says. If someone says it doesn't work, I'll be the first to say it was worth a shot. 
To get to grips with the principle of Burns engine, picture a box in a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a rod, along which a ring can slide. If a spring inside the box gives the ring a push, the ring will slide along the rod one way, while the box will recoil in the other. When the ring reaches the end of the box, it will bounce backwards and the box's recoil direction will switch too. This is action-reaction, also known as Newton's third law of motion. And in normal circumstances, it restricts the box from wiggling back and forth. But Burns asks, what if the ring's mass is much greater when it slides in one direction than the other? Then it would give the box a great kick to one end rather than the other. Action would exceed reaction and the box would accelerate forwards. This mass change isn't prohibited by physics. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that objects gain mass as they are driven toward the speed of light, an effect that must be accounted for in particle accelerators. In fact, a simplistic implementation of Burns's concept would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator in which ions are swiftly accelerated to relativistic speeds during one stroke and decelerated during the other. But Burns thinks it would make more sense to ditch the box and rod and empty the particle accelerator for the lateral as well as the circular movement, in which case the accelerator would need to be shaped like a helix. It would also need to be big, some 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, and powerful, requiring 165 megawatts of power to generate just one newton of thrust, which is about the same force you use to type on a keyboard. For that reason, the engine would only be able to reach meaningful speeds in the frictionless environment of space. The engine itself would be able to get to 99% the speed of light if you had enough time and power, says Burns. Propellantless proposals aren't new. In the late 1970s, Robert Cook, a US inventor, patented an engine that supposedly converted centrifugal force into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Scheuer proposed the EM drive, which he claimed could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Neither concept has been successfully demonstrated, and both are widely assumed to be impossible due to the violation of the conservation of momentum, a core physical law. Martin Tajmar of the Dresden University of Technology in Germany, who has performed tests on the EM drive, believes the helical engine will probably suffer the same problem. All inertial propulsion systems, to my knowledge, never worked in a friction-free environment, he says. This machine makes use of special relativity unlike the others, which complicates the picture. But, unfortunately, there is always action-reaction. With this, we have come to the end of our video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.